praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Waha, Wakal Kodash. In Hebrew, that would be the name of our Almighty Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who is our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, who is the Rakal Kodash. Double honor to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us His truth. Honor to the brothers that's pushing this truth, risking their life and freedom to do so. <clears throat> and also, um, honor to the hopeful elect, the one third of our people who's returning back to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai during these final moments so that he will have mercy on us in the time of judgment. So, we back with another lesson through the power and spirit of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. In this lesson here, we're going to talk about the kingdom of heaven. Because something that I've told, that I say, not to many people, but I said to a few people and it confused them. I know my mom mentioned it to a few people and it confused them as well. <clears throat> and everybody talk about how I don't got kids. And I tell them, I'm going to have my children in the kingdom of heaven. And for some reason, they can't comprehend that. That's because the white man corrupted your mind. Now your view of the kingdom of heaven is all messed up. Yeah, because in the kingdom of heaven, there will be sex and there will be childbirth. That's part of regular life. It's going to be part of life in the kingdom of heaven. Because what would life be without sex and without childbirth? It's not a lot about that, but that's a part of life. That's what brings joy to you in your older days. You being able to see your seed and your grandchildren after them. It would be kind of pointless to have everlasting life, to live forever, but you can't have children. So yes, yeah, sex and childbirth will be going on in the kingdom of heaven. And most people, again, Esau corrupted your mind. And most people, when you talk about the kingdom of heaven, they want to sort of stay out. They don't want to talk about it. Because they think, oh, everything's going to be too good. They're not going to be able to get their freak on. They're not going to be able to have sex. No, you're going to be you're gonna be able to get your freak on in the kingdom of heaven. But not how you get your freak on in America. It's not going to be no LGBTQT. Brothers not going to be sleeping with other men's wives. It's going to be perfect how the Lord intended it to be. A man with his own wife and so on. And that's how it's going to be. But like our Amaram say in Mysteries of the Kingdom, uh, the Bible can't be comprehended by mere mortals. You simple humans that can't grasp the concept of the kingdom of heaven being perfect, you know, as the Lord intended us to live. But all that stuff going to be going on in the kingdom of heaven and that's shown in the scriptures. And that, that's what this lesson is about, to show that childbirth would be in the kingdom of heaven. Because I tell people, nah, which they don't comprehend it, they can't grasp it, that I'm going to have hundreds of children. I believe in that because I got faith in the scriptures. And, you know, Lord willing, he had mercy on me to allow me to make it to the kingdom. But, hey, I'm putting all my bets on that. What, 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 what else we going to bet on? Oh, I'm going to have my children now in America before the world end just so I can say I got children. You know what? I'm going to scratch all that. I'm going to put that off for a moment, make that small sacrifice. And, you know, Lord willing, he will bless me to have my hundreds, maybe thousands of children in the kingdom. Because the Lord knows and everybody knows that I love babies, you know, chunky babies with chunky faces. So... I believe I'm going to get mine in the kingdom. And not just a few, but thousands. But first, <clears throat> we're going to hit Genesis 22 and 17. Uh, this is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai talking to Abr Abraham. That in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. So this is going into the nation of Israel, that the Lord would bless the seed of Abraham and multiply that seed as 
the number of the stars of heaven and the number of the grains of sand on the seashore, which can be numbered. So meaning the Lord will multiply our nation beyond comprehension that you can't even count all of our people. And that's in effect right now that the Lord numbered us as the stars of heaven and the sand upon the seashore because you can't count the nation of Israel. You got some of us that look Chinese, that look Japanese, that look East Indian, that look Arabic, <clears throat> that look like Edomites. So you really can't, you really can't count us. And that's going to bring us to our next scripture. Um, but you know we're coming into the time of judgment and Jacob's trouble. And when we go to, to the book of Zechariah, chapter 13 and 8, which is what I meant to pull up, and it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third part shall be left therein. So we know good and well that the Lord is going to kill two-thirds of our people. He's going to exterminate 66.6% .6 of our people uh, by the hand of Esau in the nuclear destruction. So how is it that the Lord promised us that he will number the children of Israel as the sand of the sea and as the stars of heaven, yet he's going to put two-thirds of our people to death? That lets you know you don't know the whole story. And that takes us to Hosea 1 and one in ten. Yet the number of the children of Israel should be as the sand of the sea. This is the Lord stating it again, which cannot be measured or numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, You are not my people. Yeah, because the Lord disowned us as his people because he was going after idols and worshiping false gods and following the ways of the heathen. So again, it should come to pass that in that place where it was said unto them, you are not my people. You know, this has already happened. There, it should be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. And that's the phase that we're coming back into. We, at previously, we were not a people for over 400, 500 years, living out the curses of Deuteronomy, being brainwashed with white Jesus and Christianity. But now, we were turning back to Yehovah Bashim, Yehovah Shai, as instructed in the scriptures so now we are returning to this last sense to this last lines being sons of the living god yahweh by shimmy shai and once we return to yahweh by shimmy shai then he would increase our numbers again then he would number the children of israel as the sand of the sea which cannot be measured or numbered so the lord is going to kill off two-thirds of our people in judgment for now returning back to the Lord for being corrupted by America and Esau the so-called white man but after his elect is saved he's going to repopulate the earth um, by the children of Israel so he's going to multiply our seed once again because going back to Genesis 22 and 17 when he talked to Abraham and then multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. That wasn't just for that time. That wasn't just for the book of Genesis. That wasn't just for 2022. That also goes into the kingdom of heaven because this promise still stands. It's everlasting. So it's even going to be in effect in the kingdom of heaven when the, word, when the Lord fills the earth with the children of Israel. And that's not just the earth. What do Yahweh Shah say? In my father's house is many mansions. So there's other lands, other worlds, other dimensions, other planets. And guess what? We're going to populate all of those places too with the children of Israel, the so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Some of our descendants into the, in the kingdom of heaven, <clears throat> some of our descendants going to be born on other planets. Some might be born on Mars. Some might may be born somewhere else that ain't never been discovered. And some of our descendants, you know, being born on these other places, they won't know nothing about Earth, just stories about Earth and what went on here. 
you know, unless they come visit. But yeah, our children going to be in other galaxies, solar systems, universes. But you mere mortals, you simple humans can't comprehend this. But the men of the Lord, the elect, this is what we believe in. So, um, and that's going to bring us to our next scripture, <clears throat> Isaiah 13 and 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Every man than the golden wedge of Ophir. So, yeah, the most precious thing in the earth coming into the time of judgment is going to be a man of the Lord. Because this is not just any man that the Lord is going to make more precious than fine gold. It's the man of the Lord, his servants, the prophets. Because what? The earth is populated by mostly women. It's seven to eight women for every one man. <clears throat> so when the Lord kills off two thirds of our people and when Esau exterminate 90% of life on earth, it's only going to be a few men left in the earth. It's almost going to be no men that survive. Pretty much the only man that's going to survive will be the man of the Lord. If you a man of the world, you're not going to make it. Uh, just to keep it plain and simple. And how the Lord's going to make us more precious, let's read Isaiah 4 and 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. So yeah, these women, they're going to cleave to the man. That's going to lead to their salvation uh, from Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. It's going to be extended to the women from the man. <clears throat> and the Lord is going to set it up that way so that both man and woman can be saved. And just a little quick side story. I went to Mexico with my girl a uh, couple times in the past year. <clears throat> you know, they, uh, they breed animals and sell them for food. And, you know, like in the old days. And her grandma has a male bull. Now the male bull, they protect at all costs. The female bulls, the 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 young cattle, you know, that would be considered children, the babies, they can sell the women and the children for food to be slaughtered or sell them to other people that might just want to have a cow or a bull. But the male bull, they don't get rid of. They protect at all costs. That might have one bull, and they may have like 20 female cows, same with the donkeys. They use that one male bull and that one male donkey to impregnate the other goats and the other cows. And just with that one male goat and that one male donkey, they can pretty much have an endless supply of cattle. Because a woman, including animals, can only be pregnant, you know, uh, you know, um, one at a time. But a male can impregnate pretty much an unlimited number of females. But that's why they protect the male bull. And even in the animal world, the male is more precious than fine gold. <clears throat> and that's with the man of the Lord, too. That's why most of the men... Pretty much the only man that's going to survive is going to be the man of the Lord, his servants, the prophets. And we're going to be more precious than fine gold because there will be no men in the earth. They're going to die by Esau's sword. They're going to die in the nuclear destruction. And a lot of our men, they're going to be um, pushed into the draft. There's going to be a worldwide draft during World War III. Not only that, when Yahweh Shai return, Esau going to push a worldwide draft so that everybody can fight against the Lord. So men are going to be exterminated. The only men left will be the man of the Lord. That's how we're going to be more precious than fine gold. And then the women, uh, that's going to bring us to 1 Timothy 2 and 15. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved and childbearing if they continue in the faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. So women are going to be saved with the sole purpose of childbearing. So women are going to be saved and they duty, the duty of a woman in the kingdom of heaven is going to be to bring forth children. And women not going to just have one child a year, every couple years. 
uh, the women gonna have uh, hundreds, uh, thousands, and millions of babies. But again, mere mortals, simple humans can't comprehend that because pregnancy not gonna be like the pregnancy here in America, in the kingdom of heaven, pregnancy's gonna be easy, without pain, and you're not gonna be jeopardizing your body or risking your life to bring forth children. So pregnancy and childbirth in the kingdom of heaven is going to be how the Lord intended it to be. The Lord gave women painful childbirth because of Eve, but the Lord is going to fix that in the kingdom of heaven. And those women will be they that continue in the faith, that um, endure in this truth. They keep the testimony to the end. And the men of the Lord, uh, the, the, the children of the Israel, the Lord is going to multiply our, our seed by the men that he saves and the women that he saves. It's going to be more women than men that get saved. So the women that get saved, they're going to have all our babies. <clears throat> then let's see Isaiah 14, 1 and 2 real quick. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So yeah, Part of this, uh, the salvation package, the Lord's going to set us in our own land. We're the only people in the earth that don't have our own land. Anything we did had, the so-called white man took it. <clears throat> and the people, which would be the nation of Israel, which would be Jacob, and the people shall take them and breed them to their place. That place is going to be slavery. They took us into slavery. We're going to take them into slavery. We're going to put them under us. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. What's the land of the Lord? That's the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom to come. The house of Israel, the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the one third that receive salvation, we are going to possess them in the kingdom of heaven. Possess them for what? For servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. They took us captive. We're going to take them captive. That's going back up. And the people shall take them. That's us taking them captive. And bring them to their place. That's their place of slavery. And they shall take them captives. Whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. So yeah, that's in the kingdom of heaven. We're going to have servants and handmaids. We're going to have slaves. Why will we have slaves if we're not going to have children? That's where a lot of our busyness come from, is raising children, teaching them, keeping things clean, babysitters. But us possessing our oppressors for service and handmaids, hey, our, our, our oppressors, they're going to be slaves in every kind of way. And the scriptures even say that our oppressors, they're going to be our nannies. So Sloppy Joe the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the elite bankers, they're going to be nannies in the kingdom of heaven. And we're going to be about to show that. So Isaiah 49 and 22, thus says the Lord Yahweh, Vashim Yahweh Shai, Behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people. And they, the Gentiles, shall bring thy sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. So the Gentiles, they're going to carry our sons and carry our daughters on their shoulders. For example, when we traveling or we walking outside, our children ain't going to have to walk. They're going to be carried. We ain't even going to have to carry them. We're going to have too much jewelry and too many crowns to carry our own children. We're going to make Esau and them carry them. And it gets even better. Isaiah 49 and 23 and kings, what kings are they talking about? The kings of the earth today. The president of America, Europe, Russia, these other countries, these elite bankers. Kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. So yeah, uh, what's that witch name? Queen Elizabeth, uh, the Prince Charles of Britain, whatever the hell his name is. And these other super rich Edomites, they're going to be nannies. They're going to be nursing fathers and nursing mothers. They're going to be babysitters. Their job going to be 
to change diapers, to clean everything, gather the food. But it gets even better. So let's continue again. A king shall be thy nursing fathers and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord. For they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. So yeah, uh, the elite bankers today, they're going to be our nannies. And they're going to kiss the ground that we walk on. They're going to babysit millions and billions of our children, not just on Earth, but across the universe, across the galaxy, the solar system, and other worlds, other planets, wherever we um, wherever we settle at and have children at, Esau going to be a slave there, being a nanny. So why wouldn't we want to have children in the kingdom of heaven? I know this. That's why. That's where I want to have my children. I ain't got to be limited, you know, having two or three children, you know, trying to save money, being worried about them. Because in the kingdom of heaven, we're not going to be worried about our children. We're not going to be on a budget. Because what? The Lord said he's going to multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and the sand of the sea. So we can have many as we want. We ain't got to work three and five jobs to try to provide for all our children. We're going to make Esau do everything so we get to be able to watch our children grow, see their first words, see them take their first steps. We're going to take them in the wild and see animals and planets they never seen before. So this is going to go on in the kingdom of heaven. Why did the Lord say kings shall be thy nursing fathers and their queens thy nursing mothers? This is prophecy. It says shall be, meaning it ain't happened yet. Because what? We raised up Esau's children. Our mothers, they had to breastfeed Esau's children before they would breastfeed our own children. So guess what? We're going to make Esau babysit billions and probably trillions of our children across the universe. So Zechariah chapter 8 verse 3. Thus says the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, I am returned unto Zion. So, yeah, that's now we got this truth and we'll dwell in the midst of Jerusalem after the Lord set us back in our land. And Jerusalem should be called the city of truth and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Let's continue. Thus says the Lord of hosts, there shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem. Every man with his staff in his hand for every age. Yeah, our old men and women, they're going to dwell safe in the streets. Because what? You can't dwell, you can't live safely in the streets of America. You are target at every corner. But let's continue. And the streets of the city should be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. Yeah, this is in the streets of Jerusalem. This is Israelite children. They grow Hispanics and Native American. Our children can't play in the streets right now. They're going to get hit by a car hit by a stray bullet, Esau be coming through with ice cream trucks, adopting little children, raping them. Other nations be trying to kill our children and abduct them, do harm to them. So yeah, in Jerusalem, the kingdom of heaven, our little boys and girls gonna play safely in the streets. Now, this is another thing I wanna jump to real quick, then we gonna go back, Revelation 21 and 21. This is going into the kingdom of heaven. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. So the, the city streets of Jerusalem is going to be pure gold. Gold so pure and so smooth, you can see a reflection in it. So when we go back and read, the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets, they're not going to be playing on the concrete streets of America. They're going to be playing on the streets of gold in the New Jerusalem, in the kingdom of heaven. And it might sound dirty, boys and girls playing in the streets. That's because uh, whoever it sounds dirty to, you a simple human. It's not going to be oil stains in the road. It's not going to be potholes and streets going to be tore up. No, the street's going to be smooth and it's going to be clean. 
It's not going to be no dirt, no OU stains, no dripping antifreeze, no tire marks. The streets are going to be completely clean. So clean that you can see your reflection in it. That's what our little boys and girls are going to be playing in. And not just on Jerusalem, but throughout the entire universe, throughout the galaxies. Everywhere we go, we're going to have streets of gold. Streets of gold on planets Esau don't even know exists. Our, ki our little boys and girls are going to be playing there. Thus says the Lord of hosts, If it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of the people in these days, should it also be marvelous in my eyes? So yeah, when we inherit the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant, the eyes of the elect, the eyes of the one third. It's going to be marvelous to see our children and our great, 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 great grandchildren playing the streets of gold, dwelling safely. But if it's marvelous in our eyes, won't it also be marvelous in the eyes of the Lord? Saith the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. We know that west country is dealing with America, but the Lord is going to save us from all over. And then again, Jerusalem is going to be streets of pure gold and the foundations of the city, as we read in, in these verses here, are going to be different precious stones and crystals. But yeah, when I tell people I'm going to have my children in the kingdom of heaven, that I'm going to have my children pretty soon, I got faith in that. So again, there will be sex and childbirth in the kingdom of heaven. We just read that the kings and queens of the earth today going to be our nannies, our nursing fathers and nursing mothers, our little boys and girls going to play in streets of gold. Because what? In the kingdom of heaven, we're going to live forever. So meaning you're going to get older eventually and everybody going to be adults. Well, if we get older and live forever, who going to be the little boys and girls if we all grow up because we live forever? That, that proves it's going to be childbirth because the Lord is going to re, re multiply our population as the stars of heaven. Not just here on earth, but throughout the entire galaxy and all of reality. And guess what? Esau is going to be our nanny. Kissing the feet of our children, carrying them. Our children ain't going to have to walk. But that's it for this lesson here. Hey, again, it's going to be sex and childbirth in the kingdom of heaven. The way the Lord intended it to be. Everything in the kingdom of heaven is going to be intensified and multiplied. So everything we can do now is going to be better and perfect in the kingdom of heaven. Women's bodies not going to be destroyed through pregnancy. But that's it for this lesson here. Till next time, Shalom.